I want you to tell me about a time when um, you felt that God really used you, that, 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 I mean, God used you, it was just so overwhelming, uh, a time in your preaching ministry where you just knew God used you just profoundly. That's easy. So we have four services, Saturday and three on Sunday. At the time it was three, two on Sunday. And I typically preach the same message uh, because if not, the crowds won't leave and we've got to shift people. So it was a Saturday evening. I preached a sermon, went home. Saturday is my Sabbath time, so I just lay down and go to bed. I woke up early in the morning on Sunday. It was about maybe five o'clock and my phone had blown up. I mean, just text after text. I think I had like over 120 tweets that had come directly to me. And they all said, I wonder what Pastor Wesley's gonna preach this morning. And I'm trying to figure out, why do people, why are they concerned? I'm gonna preach what I preached last night. Turned on the television, George Zimmerman had been acquitted. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, that happened late on a Saturday night. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And I woke up on Sunday morning not knowing it. Mm -hmm. And it was five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I've got two choices. Well, three, I can just preach what I was gonna preach and not deal with it. Maybe we deal with it at altar call, you know, because that's what I want to do. Or, God, I got to preach something else. Mm -hmm. And I knew God was saying, you got to preach something else. I mean, it's five o'clock. Service is in two hours, right. right? What do I do, Lord? And I don't want to, a moment like that, everyone's coming in. That's a relevant life issue. Right. Everyone's walking into that church in a predominantly black Baptist church and they need a word from the Lord and dock you up. You are God's voice in that moment. We need you because we about to burn this city down. You got to say something because we mad as heck, right? And all that is coming together and I got to preach. And I, my method start kicking in and I start saying, where have people had to deal with a painful verdict. And the Lord immediately put me in the mindset of Simon of Cyrene. Mm -hmm. Jesus is convicted wrongly. Mm -hmm. He's done nothing. Mm -hmm. He's sentenced to die and Simon's got to carry the weight. Mm -hmm. He's got to bear the weight of it. Wow. And I knew that's what I had to preach. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, okay, so what does Simon do to help us? Because when you got two hours, you got to go to your stick. Like, <laughs> right? I got two hours. I got to use my method. Right? <laughs> this ain't no time to try to be, <laughs> try to be like anybody else. You got to be you. Right. So I started looking at what Simon does and how Simon carries the weight and what it is that enables him to carry the weight that his sons are right there. Mm -hmm. right? And if he doesn't carry this weight correctly, the Roman soldiers could not only take him, they could take his sons. So he's got to deal with this for his children's sake. Mm. Um, Christ walks in front of him, he drags the cross behind, that there's something about keeping your eyes on the Lord in moments like this. And Simon of Cyrene, he's, he's from Africa. Now we don't, the, the Bible, you know, interpreters don't like to give Northern Africa, Africa credit, mm -hmm. but Simon of Cyrene is from Africa, he's an African. And if anyone has the ability to carry the weight, it's those that have some Africa in their DNA because mm. we've been through this before. Mm. So those are the three movements and the sermon was called When the Verdict Hurts. Mm. And it's, it's probably one of the most viewed that I've had out there. Mm. And I, I jokingly tell people, if you hear it and think that there was a lot of preparation, you're dead wrong, that was all God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, for that moment to have a message that touched people because you had to touch the hurt, you had to touch the anger, you had to touch the frustration Otherwise, it's inauthentic, mm -hmm. right? Don't just get up here and give me a shout, it's gonna be okay. No, you gotta give me a moment to say, I'm mad as heck about this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, got into the text, preached the three points, and it was written up in Time Magazine. Um, Elizabeth Diaz, a writer, called it the best sermon she's ever heard around the George Zimmerman verdict. And I have to say, only God, mm. only God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, I couldn't have written that in two hours. I couldn't have written that in two weeks if I'd known it was coming, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But again, I've been meditating on the Via Dolorosa that whole week. I've been rereading Jesus' road to crucifixion 
So that was in me already. It says you, you, gotta, you can't just read Bible to write sermons because there are going to come moments when you need something in you that the Holy Spirit can pull out. And that was purely a God moment. Mm -hmm. yeah.